So I did a big profile of Carl Icahn a few years ago for time. And at the time, he owned a large chunk of Apple. And about every couple of days, he was tweeting, you know, manically for them to give more money back to shareholders, do more buybacks. And Tim Cook was apparently listening to him mm -hmm. because, um, as you've seen, they've already done billions of dollars worth of debt issuances, done share buybacks, and they now have commitments over the next few years to issue almost as much debt and do as many bu uh, buybacks as they have money sitting in overseas bank accounts. Now, they don't want to bring the money back, obviously, and pay the higher than average U.S. corporate tax rate. But it's this great irony that a company like Apple, which actually doesn't need any capital, is more involved than ever in the capital markets in a way that I think is not actually changing the underlying business story. It's certainly not helping Main Street. And it's also creating a really volatile path for Apple itself. Because you see, the minute, you know, as bullish as Carl Icahn was for a number of years, the minute there's bad news for the company in China, boom, he dumps the stock and it tanks, which just right. shows you how financialized that growth story is. Right. We're talking about hundreds of billions of dollars. Yeah. Right. Yeah. $200 billion sitting overseas in bank accounts. Right commitments to do almost that much uh, in terms of debt issuance and buybacks here. So they're, they're literally, just to be super clear, they are issuing debt, mm -hmm. even though they have plenty of cash, <laughs> yes. to buy their own shares back yes. and release dividends to shareholders. That's right. And you know, I want So they're not using that money, yeah. just to be clear, yeah. to figure out what the next iPhone is. <laughs> no, no, they're not. As a matter of fact, uh, R&D as a percentage of revenue at Apple has been falling as buybacks have been increasing. And they're not alone. That's, mm -hmm. that's by and large true for, for most S&P 500 companies. Um, you know, it's kind of ironic because, of course, uh, a lot of technologies that make the iPhone smart were actually developed by the federal government. And so one might say, well, hey, it might be a good idea to bring back that money and, right. and uh, pay the U.S. tax rate, whatever it is. But that's, an, that's another argument. Um, you know, the point is that this doesn't change the underlying growth story of a company. It's not real growth. It's, it's sort of genetically modified growth. Well, or it's, it's stock price growth. Yeah, it's saccharin. It's market highs. And it can go away. I mean, right now we're at a tipping point, actually. If you look at uh, the record number of share buy buybacks that are being done, it has a less and less effect in terms of bolstering the stock. So mm -hmm. we're pretty much at the end of that kind of financialized growth. And actually, companies that do more share buybacks than average are starting to have poorer performance. So I think we're actually at a tipping point. Now we're going to start to see the, all this correcting.